ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take one minute today and ask yourself, am I living with intention and am I fully engaged in life? And then take the rest of that minute and do just that. I'm going to get a little bit personal in my speech today. Um, and it's in no way a sob story, it's a story of aspiration and inspiration. Three years ago, my second wife left me because I was not engaged in life. I thought I was doing everything right. Um, you know, I, I owned a gym at the time. I was working 14, 15 hour days, uh, being a full-time father. And I was doing everything that I thought my dad wanted me to do in order to get his attention properly. And it all came to a head. My appendix ruptured. Um, it was a very, I went about 10 days from the time it ruptured before I went to the emergency room. Um, apparently, that's a bad idea. <laughs> so, uh, fortunately, I'm not smart enough to figure out when I'm supposed to be dead. So um, that started the next 18 months ordeal of my life, which was a very difficult experience. Um, the first six months, I tried very hard to continue to pretend that it didn't happen to me and that I was stronger than that. Um, I finally hit a point, it was after my second surgery, that I had to uh, move in with my parents. It was a very isolating time in my life. Um, they live about an hour away from my closest <laughs> peers, and um, you know, the, the, I had nobody up there to visit. And, uh, the only people there, of course, were my parents. I had, who was at the time, was my three-year-old daughter, and then the one person who I really didn't want to see was my ex-wife. Um, and she only came up because there was something that she was able to get from me, which was either my prescription drugs, or to drop off my daughter with me when she wanted to go party, or uh, to get love advice from me on the latest guy who dumped her. Uh, because apparently, at least, I was good at that. So, um, th this, the, Several months into this, um, of this isolation, everything came to a head where she came and my, my former spouse, she came and attempted to kill herself um, one night. She took uh, the bottle of, of oxycodone that I had and swallowed it and laid down bed next to me. That was really weird to wake up to. Um, fortunately, she wasn't successful and I was able to, you know, we were able to get her to the hospital. But I realized I had a I had a choice to make at that point in my life. And I could either continue in the self commiseration, the self defeat, um, and allow myself to go crazy, or I could make the choice to follow her suit and end that existence, or I could just get over it. <laughs> and, you know, I, I had my daughter, who is at this point now four, um, who I decided I didn't have that option to do anything else but get over it. She needed a parent. And so I did. Um, it took a few months, it was a very painful experience, but by doing that um, and intentionally focusing on healing, I got to a position that I realized that you can really accomplish anything you want in your life and you don't have to suffer if you don't want to. We only suffer because we want to. And I made that, I, I now wake up every morning asking myself with that intention, am I, am I living today with intention? Am I trying to go forward with what I'm doing? with that intention, that focus? Am I engaged in what I'm doing in my day-to-day -day life? And I challenge you to do the same. Uh, that's brought me here to Toastmasters, uh, of course. I wanted to get better at being able to present and speak. Um, I'd like to conclude a little bit with uh, just a quick history about myself. Um, my name, uh, I was handed it over from my great-grandpa. His name was Gay Swan Emmett. Uh, my name is... <laughs> It's humorous today, the time. <laughs> so, uh, my, my, name, my, my full name is Tyler Swan Workman. I really hate Tyler. Please don't ever use that unless you want to make me upset. Um, but I, I, he has a very unusual name, and so I was inspired one time to find out what that meant. Um, gay, of course, at the time meant happy. Um, and Swan, I found, is a, from where he was at, is a deep south, and it was just an expression of uh, primarily used as a curse word. So, oh my swan, or well I'll swan, or, uh, but it was also used as a word of excitement, and I deduced from that that his name must have meant a happy surprise. Um, now, I, I, when I was 12, I had my peers who found out what my middle name was, and they wanted to use it as a point of comedy. 
um, and uh, I, I didn't like going about the rest of my life with my name being made fun of. So I abandoned Tyler and went with Swan and decided to own it to take that power away from them. And it's stuck ever since. So I do take great pride in knowing that uh, my middle name is a, or my name is a name that can be used as a, uh, uh, in vain, if you will. Uh, so I would now like to give that power over to you that should you want to use it in vain, you're welcome to. <laughs>